Thanks Rectech for sponsoring this video. In the mid-2000s, the reverse sear steak was created. This method was fantastic. You first cook the steak low and slow, then finish it off with a sear. Many people cook their steak this way, and you can now see it everywhere. But there's also another technique called confit. The basic principles is simple. Cook the protein slowly for a long period of time in some type of fat in low temperature. This is often used when cooking duck, garlic, and several other things. But I'm a meat guy, and today I'm cooking every meat I got available. Some will be cheap, some will be expensive, and others just complete insanity. Because if this technique is better than just grilling, we should all be giving it a go. So let's begin. To cook anything confit, the first thing we need is a very flavorful fat, and I'm gonna make mine absolutely delicious. Now, if you don't recognize what I'm putting on the pot, I don't blame you. This is garlic sauce, but not any garlic sauce. We're talking about Papa John's garlic sauce. I've done an experiment already cooking steaks with it, and that was marvelous. It was so good that Papa John's reached out to me and gave me this entire bucket. But I didn't stop there. I wanted to make it even better, so I added some Wagyu beef tallow, and I knew that wasn't enough. So I threw in some more butter, followed by thyme and a good amount of garlic. Now the first thing I'm going to be doing is flavoring this fat. This sauce by itself should be marvelous in anything, and hopefully it's going to make all of our meats taste better. Talking about that, we're going to start with the one that takes the longest, brisket. It is choice grade, not expensive, and perfect for today's experiment. Because in order to judge the reverse confit method, I went ahead and invited two awesome friends. They are authorities on the barbecue circuit. One is Jeremy from Mad Scientist Barbecue and the other one, Jo Ying. Now they have almost 30 years of experience in barbecue. And if the confit method is gonna be better, they're gonna let you know. Since I had Joe here, I went ahead and let him trim this brisket. He worked in many barbecue joints in Austin, Texas, so he knows his stuff. The important thing to remember is this. Leave a quarter inch of fat on the top, give your brisket a nice shape, and don't be cheap removing anything that is necessary. Because once Joe was done, take a look. A perfectly trimmed brisket. Now there's one thing that you don't know. He used to trim 30 briskets a day, and he can do one under a minute. This man is a beast. Once he was done, here we have both of our briskets ready. The next important thing to do is to go ahead and get them seasoned. I went with a good amount of salt, followed by coarse black pepper, then I added my barbecue rub. Once the seasoning was done, the next thing to do is to let it rest in my refrigerator so that the salt can penetrate deeply in there. The very next day, I got my smoker ready. I'm using the Regtech 2500 BFG. It is a beast. So the first thing to do was to put the brisket in there, followed by that wonderful fat I just made. The goal was to cover the whole brisket with it. And even though I had two gallons of fat, it was still not enough. But hopefully that's gonna work just fine. Because remember, we also have the controlled one. Once everything was ready, I went ahead and slowly pushed up the grill grate, closed the lid, set my temperature to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and let it smoke for at least six hours. We're gonna be checking back on this real shortly. Because at this time, we wanted something to eat. And for that, I got these two beautiful ribeyes. As you can see, they are choice grade. They have a great amount of marbling on them, and since I have two of them, I'm also going to be running this experiment. For the seasoning, I kept it exactly the same as the brisket. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and Guga's rub. Once my steaks were fully seasoned, I let it dry dry on my refrigerator so that the salt can penetrate deeply in there. Once the salt was completely gone, take a look. You can still see the black pepper and the rub. However, no more salt. That is what you want. So I went ahead and opened up the rack tack, threw my steak in there, followed by the control steak right next to it, then immediately added the fat on the experiment one. Closed up the grill and cooked it until I reached an internal temperature of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And once it was reached, take a look. That is not very appetizing. In comparison, you can see them side by side. The one on the left was smoked, and one on the right used the confit method. The smoked one had a nice, wonderful color on it. But the other one, oh boy, it literally looks like a boiled steak. Just like whenever you're cooking a steak sous vide. Once it's done cooking, the next thing to do is to go ahead and get a nice, wonderful sear on it. And for that, I'm going to be using my bullseye grill, which reaches a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. The only thing I got to do is to throw my steak in there and you will immediately start searing. Remember, the steaks are fully cooked already. So once I was happy with the sear, the next thing to do is to go ahead and slice them. But the important thing was going to be the taste. 
taste. And for that, we're gonna let you know real shortly. As this was not enough, I wanted to know how sausage would react in the confit method. So I went ahead and chose these chorizos. I split them in two batches and immediately took them outside to cook. Half will be done the reverse confit method and the other half directly on the grill. After about two minutes at 250 degrees Fahrenheit, take a look. Just like the steak, we also have very similar results. The ones on the left look like they were boiled. The other ones are starting to get a nice color. Next up was to go ahead and sear them all. And I used the same exact technique I just did with the steaks. We want to get this done quickly. If things started getting out of hand, I immediately closed the lid. Because in the end, take a look. I've cooked a lot of sausages in my life. And these are the juiciest one I've ever done. If for whatever reason you don't enjoy sausage, just try these. I have a feeling you're going to be extremely happy. As we're about to taste them real shortly. Because let me tell you something. If you come to my house, I'm going to treat you real good. So I wanted to go ahead and prepare some Wagyu tomahawk steaks for my guests. Take a look at these steaks. They are an Australian Wagyu Marbling Score 7-8 and it is one of the most impressive and delicious steaks you can have. Now to season it, I kept it the same. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and Guga's rub. Just like the previous steak, I went ahead and let it rest so that the salt can penetrate deeply in there. As the nice thing to do is to go ahead and cook them. First, I threw in my tomahawk steak followed by that wonderful fat. And since we have two of them, the other one will be the control. Then I closed up the lid and every 10 minutes I flipped the comfy tomahawk steak. Because once 120 degrees Fahrenheit temperature was reached, take a look. We got both steaks perfectly cooked. But at the same time, you already know that they need a good sear. So outside I went to my 1000 degrees Fahrenheit grill and immediately put a sear on it. This takes no time at all. Just be careful you don't lose an eyebrow. Now once I was done with the sear, I went ahead and sliced it up. And oh boy, we got nice medium rare and I cannot wait to taste these steaks and see how good they're gonna be. As by this time, my briskets were almost ready. So I immediately took them out and if you could only smell this, you would understand how good barbecue really is. Surprisingly, the part that got exposed also got a nice color. I went ahead and basted a little bit more. As now, I wanted to go ahead and get a nice little crust on it. So I transferred it to a cooling rack and it was going to be now ready to go inside of the smoker. And just for comparison, here is our controlled one. You can clearly see that the bark is much darker. It is what you're looking for whenever you're cooking barbecue. At least to me, this one looks a lot more appealing. To finish this brisket off, I'm going to go ahead and use the boat method. All you got to do is to transfer it to aluminum foil and wrap the edges up just like this. The reason I'm using this technique is because it's going to make the brisket cook faster. Talking about that, both of them only needed an additional two hours in the smoker. As once the time was up, this is our control brisket. You can clearly see this thing is as juicy as it gets. Whenever you cook low and slow, this is the results you want. And I'll tell you one thing, I cannot wait to taste it. Because remember, we still have our experimental brisket. This one was cooked confit for seven hours. Then it took an additional four hours to finish it off. Hopefully, it's gonna be worth it. Because as soon as I sliced, Take a look. You can clearly see that it's still nice and juicy. Even though it's not as juicy as the previous one, hopefully the taste is gonna be 10 times better. Because now the only thing left to do is to go ahead and taste and let you know how everything is. So now I say, it is enough talking and it is time to eat. So let's do it. All right, everybody. Here we got our beautiful brisket with my brother, Jeremy from Med Scientist Barbecue. Thanks for being here, brother. Thanks for having me. I feel like I finally arrived at the evaluation table. And like this is, this is where all the real decisions get made. Well, we're very happy that you're here. I want your honest opinion on these briskets. Sure. You and Joe are the authority on briskets. Let's just say that. Yeah, so I'm semi-pro at best. Joe's a professional, but I'm just an enthusiast. I like that you're yeah. humble. You know your stuff, my brother. Oh, well, thank, well, thank you. You I know your stuff. That. Let's go ahead. We got two little briskets here. Got a little experiment going on. Give me your honest opinion on this one. We're going to start right here. Please dig in, everybody. I hope it's not like those sausages, though. Sausage. Mmm. Ooh, great flavor. It's really nice. nice Juicy flavor. and fatty. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Please, huh? dig in. Thank you. I want to know everything. Mmm. Muted flavors. Yeah. It's smoother, but not necessarily as punchy. It seems like the flavor washed out. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. With that being said, give me your honest opinion on this one. Sounds good? Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. That's nice. For a choice brisket, it's extremely nice and tender and juicy, but I'd love to hear what you think. I think the fat on the top maybe could have been rendered a little bit more. Really strong upfront beef flavor, which I really appreciate. For me, when I cook a brisket, I want two flavors, beefy and smoky, and then it's complemented by like salty and peppery. 
I think it's a delicious brisket. That bark on it is so nice, super well seasoned, nice and peppery like Jeremy was saying. Wonderful flavor, super juicy. It's perfect. I enjoy that one quite a bit, everybody. Unlike those ribeyes. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I like that. Wow. That's good. It has a nice sweetness to it. Mm-hmm. And the peppery too, fantastic. Okay, let's try this one. Please, dig in. Cheers. 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 Less salty. Less smoky too. Yeah. Control wins. Those ribeyes were, were fine, but those tomahawks were mind-blowing. I mean, so, so good. Cheers. It's got a nice crisp on the, on the mm -hmm. outside. It's got a great sear. When I think of steak, I think of that flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's so good. Okay. Let's go here. Dig in. Cheers. I think I like this one better. This one is different, still really good, but I'm really excited to see what's happening with these briskets coming up. Are you guys ready for the last one? Oh yeah. All right, let's see. Please dig in, gentlemen. Enough talking, let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. It's very different. More tender. What I'm noticing though, is that the actual texture of the muscle fibers is different. Instead of the muscle fibers kind of being really soft, the muscle fibers are still firm, but the muscle fibers are still full of water. Like it hasn't sweated out enough water. It's less flavorful because it didn't evaporate like you said. Definitely agree with Google where the flavor is a little bit more washed out, where the first brisket that we tried was a lot more potent, powerful flavor on it, as well as a crispier bark, which I'm personally a bigger fan of. I think it's unanimous, but there's one person that must give his opinion. Leo, I love you. Get out. Damn. <laughs> Come on in, Joe. The expert. The pro. You even got new plates. I feel honored being at this table, man. Well, it's always <laughs> happy to have you here. The experiment? Yes. There we go. Let's give it a try. It's less beefy, and the thing that I love about a smoked brisket, I think it also brings in a sweetness to the brisket or any beef itself with like the fat caramelizing. It just adds something different to it. Fair enough, everybody. If you're gonna cook a brisket, don't confit everybody. Cook it the traditional way, it will be better. Do we all agree? I agree. Agreed. I agree. Guys, make sure you guys go check out Mad Scientist Barbecue. All the information will be on the description down below. Joe's channel will also be there. Make sure you guys go give him a follow. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.